Welcome to Vancouver Business Network, where entrepreneurs learn, network, and grow. I am Roger Killen, the organizer. This evening, Monica Becker is training us on how to use six ways to become more resilient. Monica, welcome to Vancouver Business Network. Thank you so much, Roger. Roger, thanks for having me. Now, I have a couple of uh, short questions just by way of teensy-weensy little interview. I think it's much more interesting than reading a paragraph that people can read anyway in the bio. The first question is this. You have been in the coaching business uh, for a long time. What made, motivated you to get into coaching in the first place? That's a really good question. Actually, I used to work as a corporate coach at my last employment where I was a team lead. And I really, really enjoyed the work with my, um, my teammates who I was coaching. That was, I was working in a call center at the time and I coached half of our um, team in this call center. And I was also their trainer and a resource for them throughout their day-to-day -day activities. And when the company had to lay me off, I then was challenged with, okay, what, what is going to happen for me now? And that's when actually the coaching kind of called me because I had really enjoyed it in that employment situation. And I just made it my, my profession ever since. And that's 11 years ago now. Wow. Well, I think I've known you for about certainly a decade. <laughs> yeah. And I, all the time I've known you, you have been running your own business. Mm -hmm. So you must have learned an awful lot. Uh, could you share with us simply one tip that you would give a startup business owner? Probably one that I would give a starting business owner and somebody who is already more senior in their, in their profession is to, to never give up. And that also cuts into our topic of resilience tonight is that if the business is really what you feel you're meant to do, then keep going and seek the help or learn new skills in order to keep yourself going. But please do keep going because our world needs people like you who are passionate about their work. And so we need you. So please do not give up. Powerful message. Thank you. Uh, audience, uh, during uh, Monica's talk, if you have some questions, please type them into the chat. And at uh, uh, intervals, I'll interrupt Monica and ask, uh, pose your questions uh, to her. Uh, the recording of this video will be made public uh, before noon tomorrow. Uh, after the meeting is over tonight, I will send you a link. Uh, but if you want to wait until it's actually officially public, uh, no later than noon tomorrow. Uh, Monica, are you ready to take and rock the stage? I am. She is all yours. Take it away. Okay. Thank you so much. Well, welcome everybody, whether you're in the room with us live tonight or whether you're watching the recording later on. Maybe some of you are wondering how come that Monica thinks she's qualified to talk about resilience. Well, actually, I think you're all qualified to talk about resilience because the fact that you're here tells me that you must be resilient. I'm sure you've had your share of challenges, your, your um, setbacks and your bumps in the road and that life has thrown you uh, a curveball. So I think you would probably be equally as qualified as I am. However, since I'm in the speaker seat tonight, I'm going to share one story with you that exemplifies on how resilience has played a role in my life. Life happened to me on September the 15th of 2008 at 10 o'clock. The fact that I still know the time and date so much can tell you how important this event was for me. At the time, I was still employed as a team lead in the call center, the same call center that I mentioned in Roger's little interview just a minute ago. And it was, I think it was a Monday morning and I sat at my desk and received a phone call from my manager who asked me to come into his office at 10 o'clock. And I didn't think much of it, so I went into his office at 10 o'clock, and guess what? I got the notice that they had to lay me off. Understandably so, the company, the industry was in difficult times at the time, and the whole economy 
So yes, but you can probably imagine that my life was turned upside down. From one minute to another, I was without work. I was super sad that I had to leave my, my dear colleagues behind. I felt uncertain about what the future would hold. I was angry. I had all these kinds of emotions and I was yeah, totally like thrown for a loop and I didn't know what would be next. Despite all these mixed feelings and my probably not feeling that confident in, as a person and really harboring lots of uncertainty and all these mixed emotions, I had one thing going for me. And that was that I had a positive attitude. I remember to the day that when I came out of that office and other people had received their notices as well, where people were crying right, left and center, and we were hugging and just shaking our heads. And I was saying to almost everybody, it's gonna be okay, I'm gonna be fine and you will be fine. We'll make it through this. And um, I'm even getting emotional as I'm talking about it, but it, it's still so, so, so alive in me that moment. And I'm so grateful that I had this, <clears throat> this positive outlook because it definitely helped me to, to work my way through this, uh, through this challenge and to come out at the other end with my head held high and a few lessons stronger. Fast forward to early 2020, and I guess we've all been facing a challenge since this spring. And when I'm looking back at myself, how I have dealt with COVID in comparison to the challenge 20 years, 12 years ago, I have to say that I've learned a lot. I've definitely gained confidence in myself. My mental attitude has become even stronger. I feel calmer and more peaceful inside. I feel that I have more... <clears throat> more resilience in all of these ways that, that contribute to it. And as much as I've learned from it, I also noticed that many people were still suffering because they felt so uncertain, they were angry, they, they were living through a lot of fears. So this topic of resilience has become important to me since the beginning of, um, of this year when we were all exposed to our COVID, COVID crisis. And that's why I've taken it on. And my desire or my intention for tonight is that you all take something away, maybe something for reassurance or a new perspective on resilience and on your life and how you can deal with those changes that you mentioned or that life can feel too much or if you feel you're in a dark spot in your life or you need to better handle the life after your your nine to five job. So my intention is for all of you to take something away that you can then apply to your life so that similar to me, your life will become easier and those challenges will not hold you up and you don't have to suffer through them. So here's what's in it for you then tonight. You will understand the meaning of resilience and why it matters. And you've given me a lot of those reasons already in our little conversation beforehand. You will then also determine how resilient you are in all those six aspects that I will share with you. And then I will share with you practical ways on how you can grow your resilience and you will receive some gifts from me. I hope that sounds like a fair deal to all of you. Now there's a couple of extras, questions are welcome and Roger will um, monitor the chat. So type them in the chat and or at specific points in my presentation, I will encourage you to share questions if you want to open up your microphones. I think that's a possibility as well. And also so that you know the slides, I will share those. Um, I will do that at the end of the talk and also the exercises that I will mention throughout my talk, I will also share them later on. So hang in there. The, the website link will come to you at the end of the presentation. So what is resilience? Let's look at that to begin with. I was actually curious and I wanted to understand where does the word resilience come from? And it comes from the Latin word resiliere, which means to rebound and recoil. And this word is composed out of two syllabus. Re stands for back 
And salire means to jump. So to jump back into shape or to bounce back once that life has knocked you over. Resilience has over the years also been, been um, used in the meaning of elasticity. And interestingly enough, in the 19th century, watchmakers actually used resilience as a word to describe the flexible qualities to prevent excessive vibration of all those minute, tiny little pieces that they had in their watches. So the world resilience has been around for quite some time. And the way how we use it nowadays is our ability to adapt to or rebound from adversity, such as trauma, tragedies, or threats to our life, our health, our families, from significant stress, and of course change. And that was something that a few of you also mentioned that you wanted to learn how to be in a better position to deal with change that happens as we all know. So why then does resilience matter? <clears throat> well, <clears throat> some of you have mentioned it. It helps us to get through tough circumstances, through all those moments in life when we think, oh my God, what am I gonna do now? like when I was laid off or somebody else said it too, that you were laid off. And I think it was um, Tiffany. And yeah, so why, how do we handle those situations? So resilience, if we have a healthy amount of it, will help us to do that. Roger also mentioned that resilience is necessary for us to grow our life and to improve our life and business. We are entrepreneurs and with resilience, we can actually have their persistence and push through the difficult times. You may also have an interest in actually protecting your people, whether it's your family or your teams in your workplace. So they look up to you as a leader and you will need to be strong for them. That might be another reason why you would be interested in resilience. It also helps us to push through and keep moving towards our goals, whatever they may be because life isn't always easy. Our goals are not always easily reached. So we need that toughness, that resilience in order to, to keep going. And then in the end, resilience should also help us to live our life with greater ease and joy. Because as much as resilience is now the main topic of our talk, it's not the end goal, it's actually actually something that should smoothen our journey. So if you look at that diagram, that might be how you sometimes feel from between morning and evening. You might have a start your day excited, but then, oh my God, life is hard. This is not working. I'm gonna give up. I don't have money. I'm gonna go bankrupt. Oh no, I've got great ideas and life is great after all. So this up and down, you probably know it to some degree. Now with a fair amount of resilience, we can smoothen this journey a little bit more. Life will still have its ebbs and flows, but it's definitely gonna be more enjoyable and hopefully a little bit easier. So as I said, as I said already, resilience is not the end goal from my perspective at least. And I would, would ask you that you look at our time together from that perspective, resilience is not the end goal. It is rather the tool, a tool and an attitude that helps you achieve the joy of living, which in my view is the end goal, that you get to enjoy your life with passion and with ease and with, with, great, uh, with great fulfillment. Monica, find, are you open yeah. to a question? Yes, please. So Nazrin wants to know how we, how did you know that this were that this new change was the right way? That's a really good question, and that was not an answer that came from my rational mind. It like it, I assume that she is um, that Nazrin that you are referring to my my layoff when I was saying everything will be yes. okay. Your layoff, then your formation of the coaching right. business. Yes. So it was just more an intuitive feeling that I had, but also it, it physically felt right to say that because I was 
physically feeling, yes, I will be okay. Even if I had all those emotions, it was more of an intuitive recognition than necessarily a thought that I would have, would have come up with. If that makes sense, it was just kind of like an intuitive knowing. Is that the only question? That's the only question, yes. Okay, perfect. Nazrin says thank you. <laughs> You're welcome. Yeah, so here is an example of resilience in nature, and I'm sure you, you've seen something similar like that. Like this tree is not being stopped by big rocks in its way. It just stretches out its root in, roots in other ways, and it keeps going. And this is actually a tree on one of my favorite trails, so I know how big this tree is. It has definitely not given up. Or even this tiny little guy. There's probably a tiny little bit of earth on this rotten stump and it keeps growing and spreading its, spreading its light. A couple of examples of really resilient humans. Stephen Hawking. He was diagnosed with ALS at his uh, age of 21. And after that, he just put his whole life through his whole life into his research and he has written 15 books while his health situation was degrading and um, so he just was so determined to not let his life go to waste but to finish his PhD and to add, to add um, his knowledge to, to the world for our benefit. Somebody else that you might be familiar with, another example, epitome of resilience is Nelson Mandela, who says that the greatest glory in living is not in falling, but in rising every time we fall. And he has the right to say that, or he, not the right to say, but he has his own experience after 27 years in prison. I guess it takes one resilient mind to come out of that kind of an experience as healthy as he, as he did. So what are a few characteristics of resilient humans? They learn how to cope and adapt. They are eager to, not necessarily eager, but they're able to go with what life throws at them and just make lemons, lemonade out of, out of lemons. And they also realize that bad times or hard times are temporary and that there is light at the end of the tunnel, even if right now they cannot necessarily see it. But it's similar to myself in that situation of the layoff that I kind of like, I knew that this is not going to last. And resilient people also don't let themselves get defined by their challenges by the adversity that they are facing. They know to separate themselves, their true self, from the situation out there that poses a challenge for them. So they don't think that they are the challenge or that they are kind of like married with it. They see things as, as separate, which is an important attitude to have in order to distance oneself from the issue. Resilient humans also develop a sense of mastery. They take control over the situation as much as they can and they work their way through it in a diligent and, and, and um, powerful way. Another point that I find is important is that as a resilient or when we grow our resilience, we also grow our ability to not actually um, lash out at other people when, when the stress gets too high or to get aggressive, but to really stay calm and as peaceful as we possibly can, even, even under stress. And that I think really characterizes um, a, a resilient person in those, in those details. So now I would like for you to actually rate yourself right now as you are on a scale of one to 10 with one being very low resilience and 10 being you're an expert at it. Like you don't have even an inch of room to grow resilience anymore because you are already so resilient. So please rate yourself, write it down somewhere. I hope that you have a sheet of paper or maybe a document open on an electronic device and just quickly 
think about it, how much room do you have for growth in regards to resilience? And then we will move on from there. You don't have to share it right now, but keep it somewhere where you can, where you can actually um, have easy, easy access to it at the end of our, our talk tonight. So now here is the assessment that I will be leading you through of the six aspects that I personally think are important for resilience. This is not all encompassing, but they, those are six aspects that I think are important if we want to grow our resilience. So for, I'll lead you through all six of them. So don't score yourself right now. Please always wait until I have given you some explanation of what I mean by these different aspects. If you are an expert at it, which means that you're really, really high up there in your ability or in, in that particular aspect, you could give yourself a score of nine or 10. And if you have a colorful marker, then you could mark this particular area aspect with a green dot. A yellow would mean that you're doing quite okay in this area. It can range as a score, it can range between three and eight. And a rookie would be somebody who is just starting to develop that attribute. And that would then be a color red and you would give yourself a score of one to two. So at the end of the evening, if you were to design your little um, assessment like that, it could look something like that. If you were coloring it out with, with the different markers. And I definitely want for you to write down the scores whether you also color the dots or not, it doesn't matter, or whether you just write down a list, I for sure want for you to always write down how you, how you rate yourself. And I will always make this little, this little diagram available so that you can see what the different ratings are after I've described each of the six aspects. Okay, so as I said, just to repeat it, so don't, don't uh, get ahead of me. Just wait until I've described the different aspects and then I'll give you uh, the green light to actually score yourself. Does that make sense so far? Any, any, dis any questions about the assessment? None in the chat. Okay. And I'll just keep going and as questions come up, just jot them, jot them down and then we'll, we'll take it from there. So the first aspect that I'm talking about is clarity. And what I mean by clarity, and if you are an expert in clarity, you know who you are and you don't, and you know who you are not. So you have a real true and strong sense of self that is kind of like unshakable. You know what your values are and your guiding principles in life and you also live by them. So you're crystal clear about what matters to you and how to live according to those values. You also have a sense of direction for your life if you are an expert in this particular clarity aspect. So you know what your life is about and you know where you're headed, headed and you're never second guessing yourself. Also when it comes to decision making, this is something that comes easy to you because you have your certainty of your values. So decision making actually is easy for you and you don't second guess yourself because you know that your decision has been rooted in something that is true to you. So there is no second guessing going on. Sorry. So this is kind of like what describes a person who is really, really good in this particular aspect. On the other side, if you are a rookie at it, you're uncertain about yourself. You don't really know what matters to you and what your life is all about. And you doubt yourself a lot. You don't really know who you are most of the days. And it's like you feel really uncertain in your life. So what I would like you to do now is actually to rate yourself. So where do you think you fit on that scale of one to 10 with nine and 10 being an expert, three to eight being okay, 
and one to two being a rookie. So then please write that down and keep it to yourself until we come to a later part. Any questions? Roger will probably interrupt me when there are any. Yeah, no questions. Okay, cool. Great, so then here are some ways for you to improve clarity in case that this is an area where you feel, oh, actually, you know what? Yes, I think I can, I can grow and learn a little bit more in this particular area. So one thing that I personally find super important is to identify and then also to live by your values. Because core values, the way how I look at them, are something that kind of like inform, they give food to our whole life. If we look at our life as the tree and the fruit of the tree being the fruit of our life, then we are guided by our core values, which are unique to us. We all have different things that matter to us and that we're passionate about, but it's important to have those things because those values, because when it comes to tough times, and we need to make decisions or we need to put our foot down, it's important to know who we are. Otherwise, life will just knock us over and then we have to scramble up, scramble up and, and brush ourselves off and get going again. It's so much easier to live through life and through difficulties if we know who we are and what we stand for. So identifying your values is, is an important aspect of growing your clarity and your resilience. One of the exercises that I will share with you is the peak experience exercise. And another other one is called clarify your values exercise. And I will share a link for you to download those exercises at the end of the talk so that you have them and you can pick with whichever one is best for you. Another way for you to become clearer about who you are, are I am statements. There's a couple of, or a few examples on this, on this, uh, on the screen right now. For example, if you are a person who really appreciates and stands in integrity, your I am statement could sound something like that. First part is the core statement. I am a person of integrity. And the second part then describes how you are living this attribute and what it looks like when you are expressing integrity in the world. In this case, it could say, I do what I say I do and I always strive to do the right thing. My words and actions are informed and driven by my values. The next statement is, I'm an optimist. I believe in possibilities. I say yes more than no and I see opportunities or solutions in any situation. So you obviously get to pick whatever are meaningful statements to you and as what kind of a person you see yourself right now or in the future. So write them from a point of view, not only as who you are right now, but also who you want to become and pretend as though you already were that. Because what these statements do when you read them, and I encourage you to read them out loud twice a day, is to actually your subconscious will be fed this information. And the more you hear yourself say it, the more it will become almost second nature to you. So those statements can be very powerful and help you to clarify how you show up in the world and who you are. So I am statements is another way on how you can increase your clarity. And then I encourage you to learn to trust your inner GPS, like that intuitive voice that I, that I had and that many of you I know from conversations have as well, that inner, inner guidance, that, just, that gut feeling that tells you what is right for you and what needs to happen or not. So to strengthen that and learn to listen to it is another way for you to become clear and more resilient in the face of challenges. And then obviously the question, okay, so who am I and who am I not? To ponder that, journal about it and give it some thought. Okay, let's move on to the second are attribute. You are you open to a question? I am. Uh, Hector asks, 
you're including community in the equation. Mm -hmm. do, do you mean how resilient we perceive ourselves in comparison to the people around us? Or, oh, yeah. in our view, how resilient the entire community is? Well, well, we'll get back to that question when I'm going to talk about it, if that's okay. But I'll, I'll, keep, I'll keep the question in mind for the this, this sixth aspect. And Hector, and maybe Roger, you can read it to me at the time again if I forget about it. Okay, so the second aspect is attitude. Again, if you are an expert in this area, you have a positive, a mostly positive and calm mindset, an optimistic outlook on view. Also, you are accepting life for what it is and the people as for who they are. You are not resisting life. You're not resisting people. You're not constantly criticizing how life is or how people are, but you go with the ebb and the flow and you are at ease with what life is and how people show up in, in life. You also probably have patience for things to develop in whichever way they need and want to develop rather than pushing forward. Another thing is that you accept yourself and the feelings that come up for you and for other people in life. That's another thing where many people get upset when, uh, when they feel emotions coming up and they don't want to show them, so they rather suppress them. No, as a person with a strong attitude, a positive attitude, you also embrace your emotions and your feelings as they come up. It's okay for you to feel uncomfortable and to not always know what's ahead of you and to not have it all planned and to be uncertain. So you're embracing discomfort and to not know and to let things evolve. You're open to learning the lesson of whatever life presents to you. And you look at, at options that are available to you, at possibilities. And you look at those things that you actually have control over and then you take control. So again, based on that attitude description that I could have just shared with you, how positive is your attitude? How strong are you in this particular aspect? Again, give yourself a score and jot it down somewhere or on your sheet of paper. Now here are a few things on how you can improve your attitude. <clears throat> Stop the three C's. And C stands for complaining, comparing, and criticizing. So if you, if you stop complaining, you accept life more as it is. If you stop comparing, you don't put yourself or other people down, rather take yourself and other people as they are. And criticizing a similar thing, like you don't need to blame life for your circumstances or other people or the traffic or whatever it may be, but just come more to a place of ease and flow with whatever is in front of you or around you. Practice gratitude. An attitude of appreciation does wonders to your mental strength and your positive attitude with which you can then face any kind of adversities or difficulties that, that you're seeing. Stay focused on the solutions, on the positive, the things that you can change rather than the issues and the, and the problems. And then something that I personally also oftentimes forget is to acknowledge and celebrate our successes. That positive, even if it's just a tiny success and progress that you made, especially in difficult situations, it's so important to acknowledge it. So the third aspect of resilience is confidence. And what I mean is a person by confidence is that when you are really, really strong in this aspect, you have the courage to be you unapologetically and you're not holding back on who you are. You show up in whichever way you feel like showing up, you're speaking your truth, you trust in yourself and in life. You're not holding back regardless of what other people think about you. So you're being the, the truest you that you can possibly be in that moment. 
And you're also having the courage to actually keep exploring yourself and to challenging, to challenging yourself and to, to see, okay, so who am I and why am I still getting anxious in those situations or how come that my dad still has the ability to, to uh, trigger me, whatever it may be. So confident people, they actually don't see um, it as a, as a challenge when they when they challenge themselves, but they see it as an opportunity for growth and to embrace more of who they are. As a person with strong confidence, it's a no brainer for you to admit your fears and your shortcomings and to be totally okay with both. So again, your turn. How confident are you in, in, in this realm, in this way of how I've described it? Are you a green, a yellow, or a red, an expert, okay, or a rookie? Okay, so here are now just a few ways on how I think you can improve your confidence. Again, identifying your values and learning to live them will give you confidence because once that you know who you are and what matters to you, it will also strengthen the way on how you show up and how easy you feel about being in the world and facing the challenges that are out there. So values are essential. Also confidence building happen, happens when you gain small successes. So start with small goals and do the little skills improvement and maybe start by adopting a small habit, just add something to it or cut off something of a habit, right? So that you don't see like, oh, I wanna climb Mount Everest. How am I ever gonna do that? I'm not even gonna start. No, well, start with one first step around, around the next tree or the bend, of the bend of the trail, whatever it may be. So start small. Posture, interestingly enough, is the way how you hold yourself actually portrays confidence into the world. And because of the physio physiology, it also actually makes you feel better. Look up rather than looking down. Hold yourself straight and look other people in the eye. That will not only make them see you as confident, but it actually will eventually also make you feel confident. And then question your inner critic, that small little voice that keeps nagging away at, I would think all of us, when we put ourselves down, we criticize ourselves because we're not fast, smart or thin enough, whatever it may be. Really go inside and, and find out, so whose voice is that really? And how come I'm, I am so harsh at myself? And why am I criticizing myself about this or that or whatever it may be? This kind of work takes time and it it's, can be laborious, but it's so worth it when you nip that inner critic in the butt and you kind of like cut it out of your life. Just trust me, I speak from experience and I'm still <laughs> talking to it. And then, yeah, part of that is to really get to know yourself and to identify who, who are you, what, what matters to you, what is it that triggers your emotions and how come, how come that certain things upset you and, and whatever it may be. But with that kind of inner work that I've also done over the last few years, it has been a huge contributor or a huge contribution to me feeling so much more confident and calm, even in the face of a pandemic or other, other challenges that, that are definitely also in my life. Monica, two questions? Yes, please. Uh, with regards to getting to know yourself, mm -hmm. the question is one word, how? <laughs> okay. And the second question, uh, would you like me to read this to you? It's a long yeah. one. Yeah. It's from uh, Doug Setter. What about the physical health aspects? Generally, people who eat, sleep, and exercise will tend to be more resilient than those with poor health. Mm -hmm. Hard, aggressive exercise like tennis 
sports, weightlifting appear to build a better stress release than, say, golf or lawn bowling. Mm -hmm. we, build res we, we build resilience through difficulty, right? Yes, yeah, for sure. And that is part of another aspect, actually, that I'll be talking about soon, which is the ownership, which also includes um, healthy self-care habits. So that aspect definitely has has a, an, an important part of resilience. Yes, I agree. And to answer the first question on how to get to know yourself, that is um, a really good question. It, it could start with contemplating, journaling, just sitting still and pondering on the questions that come up for you when, when you, for example, get triggered or upset about something. And then there's a particular tool that I would recommend, which is part of my uh, later part of the presentation. It's called the Dalian Method. And it has helped me tremendously as well in exploring who I am and letting go of many of my own limitations and barriers in my, in my own life. So I will mention that a little bit later on. And if you want, book yourself for a clarity session with myself and we can definitely in, explore that topic for you particularly in your unique situation in life and uh, see if we can find a little next step for you that gets you closer to that answer. Thank you, no further questions. Okay, perfect. Oh, see, perfect timing. I had a question mark slide here. Okay, so here comes the topic of ownership. What I mean by ownership is that when you are really strong in this particular area, you not only establish your own boundaries of what it is that you want to do and what it is that you accept in life, but you also accept other people's boundaries. So you really take ownership of your own, of your own life and what is okay for you and what is not, and you allow the same thing to other people as well. You take responsibility for your life for your actions, which means that if something goes wrong and it was caused by your decision, well, you own up to it. If you did something, something wrong or harm to, to another person, you take responsibility for it. And you are committed to the people, the projects that you have said yes to. And as a really strong person in this area, because you only say yes to things that are in alignment with your values and who you are. It's also easy for you then to be loyal and to be really committed to, for example, your goals and your purpose in life. And that is an aspect that also helps us to keep going when the going gets tough, is that we are loyal and passionate, like loyal to and passionate about our businesses, our purpose, whatever, whatever it may be. Another part of ownership is, are those self-care habits. And yes, exercise, healthy food, exercising, having rest, having company, whatever it may be. Maybe you're a music fan, whatever it may be and whatever is possible in your life circumstances. It's necessary to have a good balance between the challenges in life and the nourishing part and we are responsible for that so if you are a person that has really good self-care habits that is a strong aspect to make you um, an expert in in the ownership area of uh, resilience and in ownership uh, also falls the experience of you actually owning all of hoops sorry, all of your emotions and to not suppress them, but to actually acknowledge them, to feel them and to live through them. Because by suppressing, they keep coming up. But if we allow ourselves to feel the grief, like in the moment of layoff, like there was grieving, like both on the parts of my colleagues who were left behind and on my part as I was going. So to allow yourself to feel those emotions and work your way through is a very healthy way of dealing with life's, life's challenges, even if it's hard and heartbreaking at times, for sure. Okay, so it's your turn again. So how strong are you in the aspect of ownership as it relates to responsibility, self-care, 
commitment. Give yourself a score, please. So now here are a few ways that I can think of being helpful to grow your sense of ownership in your life. When you identify important goals for yourself and also connect to, okay, so why are these goals actually important to me? It's also easier for you to then take responsibility and take charge and take ownership of those goals and your actions that are related to them. Also, another really good way is to stop the blaming and to stop finding excuses for shortcomings or for, th for things that we missed. So no more blaming others is allowed when you're really committed to taking ownership and responsibility for your life. Find yourself an accountability buddy, somebody that, you, that holds you accountable. It's always so much easier to actually get something done if you promised it to somebody else rather than yourself. I don't know about you, but for me, for sure, whenever I promise something myself, it's much more likely that I'm talking myself out of it. But if I tell a friend or a coach that this is what I'm gonna do, I'm much more likely to actually fulfill it and to, to keep my promise. And then again, do a little bit of an inner exploration of your struggles or your discomfort of actually owning up to things and taking responsibility in life. What is it that you're actually struggling with? And uh, yeah, do some, some inner quiet, more quiet time explorations to again, get to know yourself better so that you then can overcome whatever is in your way and grow your sense of responsibility and commitment. And then again, start small and build it up from there. Start with small commitments and get some momentum from that, from that point. Open to a question? I am, go ahead. If a person with positive attitude says yes to a challenge, mm -hmm. but is not able to achieve it, mm -hmm. does that mean he is not taking ownership of his commitment? Ideally, in a, in a situation, in a life conversation, I would love to ask you a question back, but I'm gonna, gonna answer the question now from my point of view. No, in my point of view, it does not mean that a person is not committed. When we are setting goals, sometimes we just don't achieve them because they might, might life, life circumstances just work in our, in our disadvantage sometimes or make it harder or whatever may be in our way. We don't always achieve our goals, but that does not necessarily mean that we are not committed to them. Like in general, there is kind of like, um, I think a, a number like if you set your goal at 100% and if you reach 80%, that's a good average overall to actually um, be, be satisfied with. But like from the aspect of intention and commitment, personally, I do not think that not reaching a goal at 100% means that the person is not, is not committed. No. For sure. But if, if you see that you always stop before reaching a goal, that it is your mental attitude that makes you stop before you reach a goal at 100%, that might be something to explore what it is that's stopping you. But if a person is really giving their all and they just can't get any further for whatever reason, I don't think that that is a lack of commitment. I hope that answered the question. Question from, a que another question, to be resilient, does it mean you need to work extra hard? I think at some point, yes, there is, there is some kind of extra effort needed. And I do not believe that it means that we need to struggle. Right? I, I, I think there are, there are times where you need to be uncomfortable in order to be more resilient and to work your three, way through difficulties. But it does not mean that you always have to just slog away and, and work hard. No, I don't, I don't think so. That's not, my, that's not my understanding of it. No further questions. Okay, perfect. So 
let's carry on. Only eight minutes left. Two more aspects. So purpose. If you are strong in the aspect of purpose, you have, you feel good about you, about your participation in life, and you feel in charge of your life. You have a clear direction, you have goals, goals, and life feels on track for you. You also have a sense of fulfillment and you feel valued and you feel that there is, that you are contributing to life in a positive way. You also have a, um, the experience of fulfilling your potential here on earth and doing something, something good and contributing. For me, per, the aspect of purpose and potential also includes that you're open to the idea that you're not just your, your physical body and your thoughts, but that there might be other dimensions like your spiritual self and your, your intuitive self. And you're probably also open to exploring that and accepting that they are part of your life as well. So for the second last time tonight, give yourself a score. So how strong are you? in this aspect of purpose, fulfilling your potential and perceiving yourself as a, as a person from a holistic point of view. Okay, so if you are <clears throat> seeing some room for growth in this areas, here are a few things that you can do in order to to learn and grow and improve and build your sense of purpose. Explore what you love and what is easy for you, what comes easy to you, what you enjoy, what, what you lose yourself in. What is it that you for, forget your dinner about, right? Because you're so immersed in it that you just forget the world. And why is it that you love this particular thing or those things? And really learn to follow your heart and your joy rather than duty and fulfilling other people's expectations. There's one exercise in the set of exercises that I'll share with you. It's called the wheel of life exercise. It can be helpful for you to actually get a greater sense of purpose. And then there is one which is called explore your purpose. And I recommend that you do that as well. Okay, so this leaves us now with our last aspect, which is the aspect of community. And what I mean by that is, as a person who is strong in this aspect, you build strong personal bonds that are rooted in trust and in mutual trust and equality. You connect well with people, you appreciate them, and you let them know that. You are vocal, vocal about your appreciation and and your admiration of those people. You both give support willingly and ask for help and for their feedback because you are open to, for the give and the take and you don't see it as a weakness if you're actually asking for help. It's a very normal thing for you to do that and at the same time also give, give the support whenever it's needed. So those kind of relationships for you are a secure basis, a secure foundation that enables you to then actually also take risks and step forward with courage in situations where that might be necessary, like challenging situations in life or where you need to make a decision. If you are strongly supported by your community, whether that's your family, your friends, or your team at work, it helps you to then go through those difficult times and, and be the leader or the person that they look up to and that um, supports them. And Roger, do you still have that question about uh, community? I don't, can't quite remember it right now. Uh, you're including community in the equation. Do you mean how resilient we perceive ourselves in comparison to the people around us or, in our view, how resilient the entire community is? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so, so in, in that, uh, like, based on that question, so no, I was more looking at community as being an aspect of that something that makes you resilient. It's not about comparison, more so it's about 
having community, having a network, network of people that are there to support you and who you can support. So that's how I'm using it in this context. Okay, again, your chance to, to um, rate yourself, please. So ways to improve your community is one way is to actually let go people that don't fit in. That no longer you're that you're no longer aligned with, they don't share your values, they are more upsetting than helpful. So sometimes we have to be, let people go and that may be something that makes you stronger and more more resilient because you don't carry that burden of relationships that don't that are not fruitful. Respect boundaries, your own and the boundaries of other people, because that's oftentimes a source for aggravation when we don't. Listen well, listen really well. Listening is one of the most beautiful gifts you can give to a person. It will strengthen your relationships and, and make, you, make your aspect of community grow tremendously. Express appreciation, let people know that and for what you appreciate them and express it frequently. And then yes, have the courage to ask for help and give it freely as well. And again, internally, be open to exploring if you have people challenges. So what, what about those challenges? What about that relationship that triggers you that you find difficult? What is it that is difficult for you to open up to other people? So be curious about yourself so that you can explore and grow in that capacity as well. I'm just gonna jump over the questions for a moment because we're getting to the end of our time and I wanna be respectful of everybody's time. So we've shared quite a few, or I've shared quite a few ways on how you can improve resilience. It goes from reflection over exercises to you to decide who you want to be and how you want to show up in the world and to then actually having ideas and taking, taking action and practicing. So these ways are all more mind and action based. And I would do you a disservice if I would not also point out the inner work, which I mentioned here and there throughout already. And the particular way that I appreciate a lot and that has helped me over the last few years in particular, that helped me to do, like, get to know myself and get rid of many of my own limitations is called the self-healing Dalian method. And in some beautiful ways, it actually addresses all of the six aspects. So it helps us to connect to our inner GPS to become more clear. It gives us perspective on our life and our role in life and how we can approach life with a better attitude. It helps us to actually face our inner critic and to explore in order to then become more confident. It also has helped me to take more responsibility for, life, for my life, to own my own preferences and how I go about life so that I can take greater ownership. It connects me to my pur purpose or it connects the, the user to their purpose so that they can strengthen their sense of purpose and become more resilient in that way. And for sure, the Dalian method has helped me a lot in my own relationship with myself and with other people as well. Because what it does, it really helps us to connect to who we are, who we want to be, and to live our true self out with, with ease and with um, joy and without needing to apologize for it. You can check it out on this website here madadalian.com. Madadalian is the creator. And if you've got any questions about it, feel free to ask me. So now I would like for you to add up all your score, uh, your score, scores, and then divide them by six and see in which areas you have room for growth. And then of course, I would be a bad coach if I wouldn't encourage you to then at least pick one or two actions out of all the different ways that I've shared with you and go, go for it. Even if it's only small things, but do something that you can, that will help you to become more resilient, 
so that you can then enjoy living and have greater ease and joy throughout your life even when life gets tough and things happen challenges happen it's it's in your favor if you can grow your resilience in that way so quick review we looked at resilience why it is important we looked at the six elements you assessed yourself in them and now the last point that i promised you gifts for you there's a bundle of exercises and here is the download link for you. It's cleardirections.ca forward slash VBN hyphen 2020. I think Roger, if you could copy it again from the top of the chat and put it in a new note in the chat, that would be amazing. By tomorrow night, I make a commitment to also have the slides up on that same web page for you. So feel free to go there, download all the exercises and go through them. My second gift is a 30 minute clarity session with each and every one of you. If you so choose, we can talk about your insights from the exercises, plan some meaningful action steps for you and talk about answer questions about resilience, the Dalian method, or any other topics that are of interest or concern to you. Any final questions? None in the chat. Okay. Then all I wanted to say is thank you very much for your attention, for your questions, for your interest, for being here and sharing what brought you here. And go forth and become more resilient. And yeah, take action. Thank you so much. Monica, on behalf of VBN, you've opened a whole pile of eyes. Uh, your talk is extremely timely. You delivered it with your normal grace, dignity, and commitment to excellence. Congratulations. Thank you. Uh, so I'm now going to uh, conclude the recording. Uh, mm -hmm. but, but don't go away. Yes, don't go away. Yes, thank you.